Hello my soccer universe, this time in the morning and while we are covered in snow here, Brazil has been warming our hearts, no, maybe just warming us with an effective Brazilian, quintessentially Brazilian display that was a joy to watch. Uh, I see many people are going all nuts. Yes, Brazil are by far the best team. Uh, and yes, what they played, the sharpness of the passes and the uh, magic in between the dance moves while playing and also while, ce while celebrating is all next level stuff. My caveat is it was South Korea, a team that has conceded three against Ghana, has conceded uh, and has, has been opening themselves up quite a few times as well. So uh, I'm not sure if it's so indicative of how good Brazil actually are. However, as a marker, putting down a marker for the tournament, that was exactly what Brazil needed. We needed a Brazil performance that showed, yes, we can take the game uh, to an op or opponent and completely take him out, out of it. In addition, uh, you see the team spirits are high. Even the reserve goalkeeper came on. So every squad member has played. The squad seems to be united. You could see uh, even Chiche dancing with Richarlison after his uh, brilliant goal. So those are all uh, good things and I think the team is also united uh, on Pele. I honestly don't know what his condition is, but he's seemingly recovering in hospital in Sao Paulo. And so, yeah, uh, that also united, which reminds me a little bit the last time they won. No, it was not the last time they won the World Cup, but, you know, when they won the World Cup in 1994, Senna just had passed on, which kind of rallied the team. In addition, I remember how when they won the title, they rolled out the banner, uh, dedicating it to Ayrton Senna. So, uh, you know, might be just the emotional part of Brazil might actually be, be uh, banding together to get a real good Brazilian team performance out there. But I said... Hold their horses yet. I really want to see them against a really, really good, good opponent. Might have been that Switzerland gave us already a little bit in, in indication how to stop, but there was no Neymar there. So that's that. Uh, and then we had also the first penalty show, show that poor Japan is the first first place team to um, get eliminated. But I think if they would have beaten Croatia, it would have counted as an upset. It's that uh, weird for this World Cup. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that game had penalty shooters written all over it, even when Japan took the lead. So yeah, I uh, was kind of, uh, of I, I'm a little bit sorry that I think those two stadiums that were played in yesterday were probably two of the more, uh, you know, prominent ones, the ones that really stick out as being a really uh, landmark stadium because I mean, most of the others, I gotta say, I don't feel it this way, but uh, the, um, Al Janoub and the 974, also the Al Bait uh, State, State Stadium, and then the Lusail, those are the ones that really stick out to me. So I'm uh, sad to see those go because I think the others seem to be more like um, made after a, schem after a schematic. Yeah, the Khalifa sticks out, but you know, I don't want to have a, um, sta a stadium with a uh, running track around it. I would say we'll start with looking into the games. As I said, I have not, uh, I said already in my short video, which, which I did la uh, late yesterday, I um, couldn't uh, watch the first half of Japan against Croatia. I missed the opening goal by Maeda uh, through Yoshida, but I think I saw it. Uh, I barely remember it, but I think I saw it. And uh, yeah, it seemingly was well worked. But in, 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 in the end, he just had to put it uh, in. I actually felt, from what I could see in the second half, that uh, Croatia was the more sturdy, more assured team. Uh, however, Japan was the, a little bit, you know, had a little bit more than weaving passes, seemed a little bit more um, elegant moving forward. In a, uh, maybe not, 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 not elegant, a little bit more direct, a little bit more, have, have, have a bit more con control, a little bit more Spain-like, if you would like. I think that's the best way that I can say it. Um, however, when I saw the equalizer uh, going in through Perisic, uh, and again, when Maeda scored the goal, go ahead, goal, I said, wow, maybe Japan can hang on. And, you know, since I bought a Japan jersey ahead of, the, of this World Cup, uh, I want them to do well until I realized once they got eliminated. Japan actually did really, really well at this, but we'll talk about this uh, once we say goodbye to them. Uh, 
but as soon as the equalizer went in, uh, it was pretty clear to me there's nothing going to come. I mean, there was a few exchanges, but there were not any uh, real big chances. I think late on, I think Japan had a few. Uh, and then it really got out of whack when uh, Modric and Kovacic and Perisic all came off in overtime at that point. There was almost no point watching anymore. So it went, uh, because it would will, will, will go to penalties. And then I think one deciding factor, you know, I I have, I don't say I want to have I've started, but I've read up a little bit on penalties because I really believe it's not the lottery that people make it out to be. You can actually, there is some strategy involved in it. It's game theory in its, pure, in its purest form. And one thing that is always a big factor is if you have to, have a parachute in front of your own fans. You're more likely to lose because the pressure gets dry. It's all about psychology. Parachutes are all about psychology. In addition, you're the underdog, but now this is kind of... If you're the underdog, you have less to lose. But playing in front of your own fans puts more pressure on you. Now, going first should help you, although in the penalty shooters in the World Cup, as of late, I think this was not the case, but going first usually helps. But I have the feeling that now that this is known, that if you go first, you win. Uh, that I have not actually read, but this is now a theory of mine. You already think you have won. You're maybe not trying as hard, whereas the other team is going a little bit. You know, we have already lost and, uh, you know, we don't care. I think this might actually play into it. That just this feeling, yeah, I, I, I won the toss. We have now a, a, a better chance, a chance of winning. Because it's really, um, I see it more and more often. But, you know. On the other side, Italy won the Euros going first. I think they even won the, um, the semi-final by going, going first. So, you know, I might be a little bit off here, but uh, more study to come. Penalty shooter was horrible from Japan. I mean, uh, all of the penalties, you could almost guess at the beginning. And they were also, uh, you know, none of them, even Amina Mino, who just had come on, just yank it in. Not this uh, cute run-up. Where everyone can can guess or or in the run in the run, in, in the run of which direction you you're, you're going, um, and I think the the big one was I mean Mina Mina missing set them already on uh, on on the bad foot and then you had all the young Croatians up uh, up there but there was one that was not because one Smitoma missed, and then Croatia put Brozovic up I knew Brozovic will score and then it's two 0 Croatia that means done yes Livaya uh, a stupid penalty. Uh, puts his on the post, but you know, you gotta make your penalties. And if you've lost uh, two, you will lose three. It was a really, really awful penalty shooter sure, 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 and um, big, uh, 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 big thumbs up to Livakovic for guessing uh, so well. I think he was at every penalty, he was there um, and was definitely in the Japanese head. So, uh, there you go, Croatia moving on to the next round where they will now meet Brazil. I said it in the opener, uh, Brazil just came to play. I mean, uh, it was a game where I could see that Croatia, uh, Croatia, Korea and Croatia has been messing with my head now quite a bit, uh, where Korea, uh, probably if they get the VV pattern that they kind of play, uh, get that, get that going and they have good, uh, they have uh, good shooting boots. Maybe they could cause themselves some problem, but Brazil need to have an off day. I really could not see Brazil losing this one. And when Vini Jr. after seven minutes uh, made it, it was game, set and match. Then a penalty by the rules. Again, I don't think that he he meant to get the Richarlison down, but you know, Richarlison gets in, hits him, it's a penalty. I think this is something we can a little, a little bit look in. And uh, although Rafinha wanted to take it, Neymar took the ball from him and in typical Neymar fashion. It was so interesting how he, with his little stutter steps, um, is looking at the goalkeeper who is jumping, jump, jumping, and then he has to commit. And the moment the goalie commits, Neymar nonchalantly pulls, pulls in the other um, direction. That was class. If the goalie doesn't commit, Neymar doesn't know where to go. Or maybe he has an idea, but in, I think Neymar always tends to go a little bit more to his right. Just uh, thinking. The pick of the bunch, though, was the Richarlison goal. I, I mean, what a brilliant beauty. I mean, first, how he's chugging the ball on his head, then uh, getting the ball. I think it was Rafinha who plays it to, or was it Marquinhos? I, I, I don't know. I couldn't get 
who plays it then to uh, Silva, who immediately puts it back, and Richarlison is in front of the goal and makes it 3 0. This was everything in there. You had the artistry of um, Brazilian players plus the sharp passing that that is needed. This was such. This was a masterpiece. This was my favorite goal of the World of the, the World Cup. Yes, the first Richarlison goal, or second Richarlison goal against Serbia. That was uh, also a piece of skill, but this particular one had everything in there. Great team play plus the magic. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved, loved it. Uh, brilliantly played. And then Paqueta makes it 4-0. And at that point, I mean, I told after the 2-0, two, the, the two after 30 minutes, I told to my family, I this can get really, really ugly for South Korea. And it almost went. It's just that Brazil then decided to take a foot off the pedal, you know, put on some reserve players. Um, give the third goal string goalkeeper a run in. To their credit, South Korea actually had a really good chance when it was 2-0, uh, where um, Alisson needed to uh, save. They had also a couple of other chances. If they had a clinical striker up front or if they had a little bit more luck finishing, uh, they could have made it a little bit more of a game. However, on the other side, Brazil could also have scored six in the first half. Easily. So they also have to I was very happy when Palk... Uh, put the goal back. Uh, I think uh, Alisson before had to also make a, a good save. He was the one that probably was not happy for Brazil because he wanted to surely keep a clean sheet. Wasn't meant to be. Brazil win it 4-1, moving on to the next round. And in this next round, they're going to meet now Croatia, um, which honestly, I think Croatia will give them more trouble than South Korea give, uh, gave them. I also think that Croatia is probably the most solid team that they have met so far. I still don't think that Croatia will be a real challenge for Brazil. Because Brazil, well, Croatia has probably one of the best midfields in there. They're a little bit on the aging side. I'm still not uh, super sure uh, about them up front and also a little bit on the back um, uh, of overall. Brazil is going to take Croatia apart. In the end, I think this is what's going to happen. Uh, I don't want to say they have a free pass, but I think uh, Croatia will tell us a little bit more. But it's not the real challenge that uh, we are going to see. However, that's exactly. I, on, the, on the other hand, I honestly think that the uh, Croatians are probably one of the most underrated teams at this World Cup. Everyone looks a little bit past Cro uh, Croatia, like they didn't reach a World Cup final last uh, time asking. But I only can see Brazil winning this one. However, you know, uh, we had it before that uh, Balkan teams can cause trouble. They just don't cause trouble to Brazil. That's, uh, that's where I'm going. And so uh, from all the quarterfinals that we already have, and even with the prospect of um, Portugal um, meeting Spain, talking about that in a bit, I think that Brazil probably has the easiest path into the semifinal. The semi-final, I think, will be a different proposition, but uh, we'll talk about it when it gets that far. Um, as is custom now, I'm going to say goodbye to both uh, the um, East Asian teams in Japan and South Korea. I think Japan has been sensational at this tournament. Uh, winning this group with Germany and Spain in there is a major feat. Yes. Spain probably took the foot off the gas a little bit, uh, although Luis Enrique wants to convince us that it, it was he never knew how it's standing, that he was actually thinking they're going out or whatever. Be it as it may, uh, Japan definitely overachieved by getting out of this group. Now, would it have been nice that they go in the quarterfinals? Yes, but uh, it would have it definitely would have been an upset. For South Korea, um, it's, a, it, it's a mixed bag. Yes, they made it out of the group. And they were clearly at least the second best team in this group. I think second best team describes them well, because I think Portugal just has a little bit more. Uh, on the other side, the loss to Ghana weighed a little bit heavily, uh, because that actually was a, a game that you should never have lost. You probably even should have... Yeah, Uruguay was even. But you should never have lost to Ghana. But in the end, it all turned out well for you. And in that sense, you did well. And then um, I can see that Paulo Bento was not happy that they had only three days to prepare for the Brazil match. Uh, on the other side, you know, it's in club football, this is happening all, all the time. 
But what both sides continue to do is, is enriching this World Cup. And for that, I want to applaud them. And yes, goodbye Japan, goodbye South Korea. It was great to have you at the Tour Tournament. I really wish that at one point you will make it into the quarterfinal. And with that, I think it's almost time that we preview the two last um, round of 16 matchups. However, before that, first off, I actually put the blue Brazil shirt here because I think Brazil will play in blue against Croatia. And also before we look into uh, those two uh, matchups that are coming, uh, quickly look at the favorites and Brazil is now very, very decisively up there. And because Brazil is so looming large in a semifinal, 76% chance of making it there, Argentina's chance is actually diminished a little bit and it's now France in second. Which Brazil and France at the moment are the top favorites, although don't discount this English team and we have to see what Spain are doing. Speaking of, I actually think we can put both and there probably are very much both Spain and Portugal are on upset alert. Um, Morocco has what it probably takes to take down Spain. They have really, really good players and Spain has not been convincing. If they make another orgy, passing orgy, uh, it's not going to end, end well. However, if they can add a little bit punch up front, I think Morocco uh, will suffer uh, quite some. On the other hand, I think Switzerland is sturdy enough to really take this Portugal team and, uh, uh, you know, upset this Portugal team. Let, let, let's put that. They have done it already in the Nations League and what goes there is a little bit unrest in the Portugal camp because we hear that coach Santos was not very happy how uh, Cristiano reacted to being substituted. And I'm so tired of this guy. I will rule with all my might for Switzerland in this one. I really do, even uh, if Rafael, I just want this guy out of the World Cup because he's just, he's just ruining himself at this moment. It's just pity. It's a pity fest in many ways. So yeah, again, from a neutral view, I think both Spain and Portugal look vulnerable. However, having said that, if both of these would move on, I think we would get a really epic quarterfinal with three, with three uh, really cool matches ma ma plus Brazil, Croatia, which also is not too shabby, to be honest, because Croatia has been entering the top echelon. Uh, in Europe uh, for sure so would be an absolute wonderful wonderful quarterfinal but the only the, the, the one thing that's a little bit boring is that it's all chalk so far I mean all the favorites have moved on you know you gotta wait but you know if you all the favorites move on we get great mouth-watering matchups none bigger than I would say the last one that which will be France against England any case that was it for me a little bit a longer video but you know I'm a bit fresher this morning and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like this, drop a comment below if you want to add something and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!